Welcome back to MVM as we take a look at another game today. This one is Chong On from Deer Games. Now, this is a tableau building drafting game set during the Tang Dynasty where you are all different architects trying to compete to build the best districts in the city of Chong An. And those districts are represented by a fold out board that has several different rows representing the different places that you can build in your city. Across the top, you're going to have four gates and the game actually works in two stages. You need to bring people into your gates and then from your gates, you can let them into your district. However, other players can bribe your characters from your gates to come into their city districts instead. So that's an interesting uh, level to the game that we'll talk about here in a second. But let's talk about the actual game setup. And you'll see here, I have a three player game set out in front of me with the five different decks and the four different resources. These resources are gonna be used to play cards and do other things over the course of the game. But what's really interesting is that each one of these five decks has a different function. You have the military deck, the science deck, the trade deck, the politics deck, and the production deck. With any given game, you're not going to use all of these. You're going to use one deck per player. So if you want a game that's more combat heavy, you'll use the military deck. If you want a game that's more about science, you'll use the science deck. And you can have each player pick one or you can just pick some randomly to mix together. In a three player game, we're gonna choose three decks. So you would take those three decks and you would actually shuffle them together into one big deck and the other cards that you're not using are simply removed from the game. So these are two entire decks of cards that you're not even going to see. And the way that these card decks interact with each other is going to change up the gameplay. So you're gonna be playing a different kind of game every time you play. Some of the combos and synergies that you're seeing between different cards might not be there in a future game. Of course, each deck is gonna have synergies within itself. So you will have some consistency. It doesn't matter which decks you're mixing together. You're always gonna have a very solid experience. So you'll shuffle up the deck here and that forms the main deck of the game. Once that deck is shuffled, you're going to reveal three cards that are going to make up the row down here. And this is kind of a drafting row. And then you're going to give each player four cards to serve as their starting hand. You're also gonna start with two resources, one wheat and one coin. There are two other resources, stone and wood, that you'll have to earn as well. But once you have your four cards drawn, you can start playing the game and you can go in whatever turn order you like. Once you've determined who the first player is, the game is just gonna go around until the end game condition has been met at which point you'll finish the round. Now, gameplay itself is divided into three phases with two bonus actions that you can take on your turn. The first action is to take one of these cards and this is called research. You're either gonna take one of the three cards that's available here and add it to your hand or you can choose to take the top card of the deck. If things aren't looking great for you, you can do that instead. Then you're going to add cards to your city. This is called the production phase. You're gonna see here that each one of these sections has a different resource, one of the four resources attached here. These are your gates, and you're gonna take these cards and you're going to place them on your gates. And you'll notice that these cards all have resource symbols on the bottom that might match with some of the different resources that are being produced here by the, these different gates. You can play up to three cards and then you can rearrange your board however you like with a few caveats. First of all, the three cards that you play all have to go to the same area. So I could play these three cards. Secondly, everything you're moving has to go to the same area as well. So you can decide which resource that you wanna produce here in the production phase. So you have some flexibility in the resources that you get. However, all three cards have to be played to one gate and then you can choose one gate to move cards to. Each gate can have a maximum of three cards, so the most you're gonna get is potentially four resources, unless there are some cards that might have a double of one resource or another. But that's basically it for that phase. However, there's some things you need to keep in mind while you're setting up your character's cards on these gates. First of all, as you're moving them, they always move in order from the top down. So if I wanted to move some cards to a different gate, you need to be cognizant of which card ends up on the top because two things can happen to that card. Either it can be brought into your district during the build phase, or it could be stolen by another player. And this is where I was talking about the two free actions you could take on your turn, so I'm gonna talk about those now. One is simple. You can spend two coins to just buy any one resource. So if you need a resource during the build phase and you're just short on it, you can just exchange those and that's fine. The other thing you can do is spend stone to buy cards from other players' gates. So if other players 
have cards out available on their gate. As long as they have at least two cards, you can never take their last card. But as long as they have two cards, you can pay to take it and bring it over to you instead. And this is kind of huge because you can really mess with the player's strategy. And that's why I was saying you need to be cognizant of how you're setting up your rows. Because if you have a card that you know you really want to keep, you might want to make sure it's the only card in that row so nobody can buy it. Or bury it with other cards so that no one can buy it either because they can only buy the top row. So the, the order in which you play these things is very important. Now, after you would trigger a row, if there were character cards below in that little district, you could trigger them as well. But you have to build them into your district first, and that's the next phase of the game. So if you have all of these cards available up here, you can choose the top card of any row, and you can add it to your city by paying the required resources. And you're going to see each one of these different rows has a different resource cost. So this is two stone. If I were to place another one later, it would be three stone and one wood. And another one is gonna cost three stone, two wheat and two wood there. Once you have three in a district, that district is considered full. However, as long as you have a character card that has an ability, it will trigger every time you trigger your row. You'll have some that have this little character symbol. That means they're character actions and they'll trigger when you play the card and when you trigger that row. You'll see some that have this infinity symbol on the bottom. That infinity symbol is just an active ability that's going to trigger over and over as you play the game. And then you'll have one that has this little laurel on the bottom. That's an in-game scoring card. So those cards are going to score you points at the end of the game. So you're going to do this in a row, player after player, until one player has nine cards in their district. That is what determines the end of the game. Now, it's not just nine rounds because you're not always going to be able to play a card into your district, especially when you get to, to the end here. Some of those really expensive cards are going to require a lot more resources to add. And some of the cards themselves have symbols like this little coin that's saying you have to pay a coin in addition to the cost to add it into that section. Now, there's a lot of strategy in how you're placing these. You might think it's simple. You just go four across, four across, and then one more, and then you're done. But your better benefit is actually to fill up all three rows and leave one row empty. However, there's some strategies for mixing in those things because you're going to get one point at the end of the game for every card in your first row, three for every card in your second row, and eight for every card in your last row. So if you can get three completely filled up, that's a lot of points you're getting for each of those rows. But you can also get points for having a full set of cards across. If you have four character cards in the top row, you get three points. And if you have a full set of the three different card types in the second row, you get five points. So yes, there's a lot of ways to score points in addition to the in-game scoring cards that are all going to have their own in-game scoring conditions. And lots of cards just have points on the top and those points are just going to be scored at the end of the game as well. So this is certainly kind of a point salad style game. You could be earning your points from a lot of different ways. You could just go heavy on those in-game scoring cards and load up on them to score a lot of points. You could try to fill those different columns across with the sets. You could fill the rows. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways you can approach this game. And of course, those strategies are going to change based on the decks that you chose at the beginning of the game. So some of those in-game scoring cards that you might be searching for that you're used to scoring, they they just might not be in the game if you're not using that particular style of card because each of these decks has their own particular focus. For example, if you're using the production deck, the blue deck, you're going to be able to produce way more resources than normal. If you're using the trade deck, you're going to have an element of trading and negotiating with other players. If you're using that military deck, then you're going to actually have another level of competitiveness of, of player interaction with those military cards. Your science cards are just going to give you a lot of permanent abilities or in-game scoring conditions that are kind of going to give you engine building. So you won't have a lot as much engine building without those science cards. And then lastly, the politics cards are just going to kind of speed up your game by giving you a lot of different character abilities. So based on which ones you use, like I said, the game is going to be very different, but you're going to play until one player has filled out nine cards in their district. You're going to score up all of your points and that is the end. Whoever has the most points receives the emperor's favor and becomes the favorite architect of the city. So that is Chong An. For people that are big fans of tableau building games, drafting games, this kind of has, I think, the best of both worlds there by giving you a very interesting draft mechanic, the ability to steal cards from other players, and all of the timing that you have to do to set up your perfect 
Tableau, it's very neat. Plus the customization of being able to, to come back with different decks in different games. I think there's a lot of replayability here. So take a look at their Kickstarter page. I know there's some other content variants and expansions that they haven't shown yet. I've seen a little bit of a tease of one called the Silk Road, which looks really cool. But be sure to take a look at their page for all of that. And then please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you're most excited about when it comes to this game. And as always, thank you for liking, subscribing, following us here at MVM, and keep having fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.